after World War II, communists came to power in Romania, which deeply impacted the church. Richard and Sabina Wormbrand were at a meeting where church leaders were told how Christians should support and cooperate with the communist government. If anyone spoke up, they knew they could go to prison. John Groders picks up the story. And Richard and Sabina are sitting in the audience getting frustrated like this isn't how it should be. And, uh, you know, she kind of says, you know, you should speak. And he says, if I speak, you know you will lose a husband. And then one of Sabina's famous lines, she says, I don't need a coward for a husband. Richard speaks. And for 14 years, she loses her husband. I mean, everything he said was true. Jesus never promised his followers an easy path. In fact, he told his disciples that the world would hate them. He sent them out as sheep among wolves. Jesus' words came true in the life of the apostles, and they're still coming true today in the lives of his followers around the world. Join host Todd Nettleton as we hear their inspiring stories and learn how we can help right now on the Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network. Welcome again to the Voice of the Martyrs Radio. My name is Todd Nettleton. We're in the studio today with John Groders. John is the writer and director of a brand new film, Sabina, Tortured for Christ, The Nazi Years. Many of you will have seen uh, Tortured for Christ, the movie, came out several years ago. John, also the director of that. John, welcome back to Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Well, thank you, Todd, and it's, it's always such a joy to be here. You know, John, most people's lives uh, aren't really worthy of making a movie about. Uh, You've already made one movie about Richard and Sabina Wormbrand, now a second movie. Why are their lives worthy of uh, being told in not just one film, but two? Man, if we can make 20-some movies about James Bond, uh, (laughs) we could make an endless number of movies, I believe, out of the stories from Richard and Sabina Wormbrand's life. They're real heroes to me, and, and they are real inspirational people who lived in the most uh, dark and fascinating time. So you, you have this crucible of history in the 20th century. Romania is a country the size of the state of Colorado, once known as the breadbasket of Europe. Bucharest was once called Little Paris. And then the rise of the National Socialists, or as we know, the Nazis. And when World War II commences, uh, the Romanians are in you know, cahoots with the Nazi. That's the, what side that they are on. Uh, But halfway through the war, they switch sides, only as the war ends, meaning that they are now under the thumb of the communists, the Soviet communists. And so this poor little country really gets beaten down by the Nazis who come in and and are are arbitrarily, um, you know, exterminating the minorities, no Jews. They just take over their companies. They take over their land. They exterminate hundreds of thousands of Jews. And then when they get rid of the Nazis, here come the communists. And they come in and they say basically no religion at all. And so that's where we met Richard and Sabina in Tortured for Christ when they were imprisoned uh, under the communists and that lasted for 14 years. This new movie, Sabina, Tortured for Christ, starts in the same exact time, 44, but then it goes, the whole movie is basically in flashback. And uh, as the movie begins, there are these three German Nazis who are now on the run in the city they used to terrorize, Bucharest, and they're on the run because now the Soviets have come and there are some Nazi soldiers who haven't yet escaped the country and they're kind of in hiding. And so the tables have turned, or as we say, the hunters had become the hunted. And so these three Nazi soldiers are told of one house that may give them some help, food and shelter, and the address is the home of Richard and Sabina. And they knock on the door and Sabina sits down and, and offers some assistance to this enemy of hers. And it is an enemy of unbelievable depth. This is an enemy who has imprisoned her husband three times and her twice and beaten them. And worse than that, it's an enemy who has exterminated her beloved family and all of her relatives. And yet, when faced with that enemy, she, she gives them shelter and the German says, why would you do this? I would never do this for you. When, when the Reich recaptures Bucharest, as we will surely do, I would never do this for you. And she says, I'll protect you from the Russians. I can't protect you from the wrath of God. And she helps them. And he says, why? Why would you protect a German soldier? You know it's a life sentence if you're caught. So that's the question the movie has to answer. Why would 
uh, anyone help their enemy? And to answer that question, she, she sits them down and she starts the day she met Richard Warmbrand and she tells her life story and it is a beautiful love story. It is a beautiful love story. We're talking today on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with John Groders. He is the writer and director of a brand new film, Sabina, Tortured for Christ, The Nazi Years. It is going to be in theaters nationwide, November 8, 9, and 10, right after the International Day of Prayer for Persecuted Christians. You can learn more at sabinamovie.com, sabinamovie.com. You can, uh, there's a link there to get your tickets. Make sure, take your Bible study group, take your church, be sure that you see this film. John, there's there's an amazing part of this that the, the movie begins with, not, not based on a true story, but with the words, a true story. Those Nazi soldiers coming for shelter to Sabina— that really happened. <laughs> that that this is not like we're creating a, a sort of canvas to to make a story on. She tells the story in her book that that actually happened. You know, everything in both of these films, I mean, like you said, we released Tortured for Christ, I think in 2017, and now in 2021 we're going to release uh, Sabina. And uh, as much as possible, um, I tried to use the words of the worm brands. And thankfully, they wrote a lot of them down. Yes. Their phraseology, their cadence, their insight, their humor. Of course, we have to fill in some gaps and put together you know, some, some particular set pieces and locations. But, but these are their words. This is a true story. And, and, and it's taken from their autobiographical writings. This movie is a, a different style of movie than Tortured for Christ, which was a lot in the prisons. And this does take them back to their youth, and uh, there's a lot of sort of romance and beauty in these things. And so the very first time they get picked up by the Nazis, it's the first time either of them have been arrested, it's certainly the first time either of them had been beaten, and they don't start out as experts in this field. They don't start out like, yes, we just suffer for Jesus. And they have, like the rest of us, fear. And, and the very first thing they meet in the prison, she says, she says to him, looking at the scar on his face, was it, was it horrible? And he says to her, there was pain. I will not lie to you. But later in that same scene, he says, I am grateful to be among the beaten by his grace rather than among those who beat. And this is the beginning of that understanding, a deeper understanding that they begin to to live out of what it means to be Christ followers, of understanding Jesus's call, which is so radical, you know, to turn the other cheek if an enemy strikes you on on one cheek, to if someone says, carry my pack a mile, that you carry it two miles. Like this kind of radical thing that we hear about in Sunday school, that we read about in the Bible, it becomes the word made flesh once you are put in that situation. And no one wants to be put in that situation that I know. I don't even think Richard yeah. and Sabina no, would say you want to be there. for the suffering line. But if you end up in that situation in life, and at that point you start to live out the words of Christ, then we actually are now becoming transformed into his image. Mm-hmm. which really is the goal of all Christians. Yeah. We don't often think about our spiritual heroes uh, sort of B.C., b- before Christ. Uh, this film shows Richard and Sabina Wormbrand, the, the founders of the Voice of the Martyrs, the people who would go to prison for Christ for years, shows them before Christ as very worldly, very lost, uh, hedonist, did you ever worry in the filmmaking process that somehow you were kind of tarnishing their image or, or tarnishing their legacy by showing that part of the story? You know, the Apostle Paul didn't seem to worry about that, did he? And he said, <laughs> you know, I was the worst sinner of all sinners. And he goes on and then he tells you why. He actually was. And, you know, the, the stories of the Bible— I think we can take our, our lead from. And, and Richard and Sabina, likewise, they don't candy coat anything when they tell their stories. They're very honest. And thank God they are, because otherwise, you know, we don't recognize ourselves in these stories. And Tortured was an incredible project to work on, a life-changing project for me. And the only thing when we finished it and people go, man, could I do that? What would I do? How would I respond in those situations? The only thing I said was, well, I don't know that I could respond like them because I'm just not as good as they are. And to some degree, that's probably fair. They were smart. I mean, Richard speaks 14 languages, and these were exceptional people by any measure. But the, the goodness part of them wasn't inherent. And if you watch Tortured and you think, well, that's just not me. I couldn't do that. 
I really wanted to do another film with VOM and do the backstory because it turns out that we can relate to them. They, they had a, back, a background that was as far from Christ as anybody's. So to really let them tell the backstory of, as Sabina says, how she fell in love with her husband and then how she fell in love with God and then finally how she was able to learn to love her enemies. Um, that's a story that has on-ramps for us no matter where we are in the journey. Um, I think Cole Richards, the president of VOM, was sort of making that comment that there's something in this for everybody, wherever you are on the journey. He said, whether you're not a Christian at all, you recognize yourself in this film. Whether you're searching for God and haven't yet come to a conclusion, there's something, there's some place for you in this film. Whether you're new, I said, yeah, even if you're a mass murderer, because we've got that too. Um, but I really like that we can put these two films together and see that any of us, through obedience and faithfulness, can reach the highest levels of life in Christ. And not only does that make a difference for the kingdom, that spreads the kingdom of God in very real ways, but it also leads to that life we talked about at the start of joyfulness and peacefulness. There's a, there are fruits and benefits um, spiritually of being like Richard and Sabina because they were like Christ. Amen. We're talking today on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with John Groder. He is the writer and director of a new film, Sabina, Tortured for Christ, The Nazi Years. You can find out more at sabinamovie.com. It will be nationwide in theaters November 8, 9, and 10. Learn more, sabinamovie.com. John, how important was it to emphasize Sabina's side of the story? Uh, you know, we, we often think of Richard. We know his side of the story. Many of us have read Tortured for Christ. How important was it to kind of tell and, and kind of focus on Sabina's side? Well, it makes for a really nice bookend. So the other movie, Tortured, the narrator is, is Richard. So you kind of hear the story from his perspective, which is an amazing perspective. He's got incredible insight and wisdom and patience. And just to make a, um, you know, to finish, to, to balance it out, this story, we really decided, let's, let's tell it from Sabina Oster's point of view. That's her maiden name. Um, and thankfully, we had cast two fantastic actors in the, the previous film in Tortured to play the roles of Richard and Sabina. And I just believe God led us to Emil Mondanak as Richard and Reluca Botez as Sabina. I don't think I could have spent five years searching the entire planet. I honestly don't and found better choices at any price or at any level to play Richard and Sabina than they, Emil and Reluca. They also happened to just physically – resemble Richard and Sabina. It's really oh, kind of amazing. I was just in the lobby right now waiting to come in for this interview, and there's this famous picture of Richard and Sabina at this bridge. And I'm looking at this picture, and it's the, about the same age as our actors are. And my goodness, there's a striking uh, physical resemblance. John, you've spent, what, the last five years of your life uh, deeply involved, deeply connected to Richard and Sabina's lives their writings, uh, the the ministry they founded, the the work they did. How have you been impacted? And I think especially of in terms of faith. How have you been impacted by the last five years you've really you've spent with Richard and Sabina? There's no doubt, and I would say this for Bo Judy and I, both of us. Um, the ministry of the Voice of the Martyrs is to remember those who are in chains around the world. We have actively now become regular prayer warriors for the persecuted church. And that's part of the result of now being involved with the Voice of the Martyrs. I get your I commit to pray every Friday, and I take a few moments and, and pray for those uh, people. And, and sometimes I've got time to read the prayers of the others. So we have been engaged, one, with the education, because I did not realize, other than a couple of smatterings in the news, what was going on in the world. And, and VOM does a great job. That's the result of the ministry of Richard and Sabina. Personally, however, Richard and Sabina worked as a couple. And I have the privilege of working with Judy and my wife on these things. And we recognize in their marriage ways that we can improve our marriage. What we find in both of these films, Richard is definitely a leader. Like, he is a biblical husband in many, many fashions. Sabina is not only his equal, she is really, in some ways, uh, I don't know how I would put it, but if you saw Tortured for Christ, there's this one scene where they're sitting in the Congress of Cults, 
And what's happening on the stage is that the church is capitulating to the communists who have, who have committed to uh, increasing their pay. And, and uh, the church has really been compromised by the Communist Party, which is atheist at its core. And Richards and Sabina are sitting in the audience getting frustrated like this isn't how it should be. And, uh, you know, she kind of says, you know, you should speak. And he says, if I speak, you know you will lose a husband. And then one of Sabina's famous lines, she says, I don't need a coward for a husband. Richard speaks. And for 14 years, she loses her husband. I mean, everything he said was true. He didn't jump out ahead of her. He waited for her to make that commitment. In this particular movie, again, they're approaching a Nazi checkpoint one night in their car, and they're, they're checking the IDs, and their ID has a big red J on it. And it, it was their last chance to peel off and, and go into hiding and run away. And, and once again, it's, it's Sabina who opens her Bible and, and, and reads, and she says, he who would save his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. We believe this or we don't. Now, that's in the Bible, he who would save his life will lose it. It's not a passage that we've thought about much, but when we work with Richard and Sabina and we see the, the commitment that they said, we believe this or we don't, I think we have to stay. We have been challenged personally through these things to say, when or if the time comes, can we respond, not as Richard and Sabina did, but as the Bible calls us to respond? And uh, probably we would all admit that's not really a conversation that we have had in our Western Christian lifestyle. It is a conversation that seems like it's more and more important to have so that we can be victorious if or when those challenges come. And Richard and Sabina have queued us up uh, for that. We're talking today on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with John Groder. He is the writer and director of a brand new film, Sabina, Tortured for Christ, The Nazi Years. Again, you can watch a trailer. You can order your tickets at sabinamovie.com. John, how does it feel? You've put all the work in and all the work and all the work. Uh, Now people are starting to see the film. In fact, uh, this week, the staff here at Voice of the Martyrs had the, the privilege of watching the film. You know more people are going to watch it in the weeks to come. How, how does that feel? Do you, do you feel nervous? Do you feel excited? What, what goes on in, in your heart and mind now that kind of your baby is, is going to be out there for the world to see? Well, it's a great question, both. But I'll tell you this. My job is not to, um, to do a good-for-you movie or eat-your-vegetables movie. This is, to be, this is entertainment. I mean, sincerely— um, as much as I love the subject matter, if you don't love going to the movies and enjoy yourself, then that's that's a failure. And this is the best subject matter I could have ever been handed because it's true and there's the ring of truth and inspiration. I sincerely want people to say that was my favorite film I've seen in years. There was something about it that was beautiful. And, and it was uh, at the Christian Worldview Film Festival recently. It won Best Picture. And, and even more important to me, it won Audience Choice Award. So uh, it was a beautiful uh, first showing at Christian Worldview, and now that we've showed it to the VOM staff, I mean, I have to watch audiences now because I don't know until they see it. But I think people are going, that was wonderful. Uh, and, and those compliments are, are given and sometimes to me, but they, they really are to the cast, to the crew, to the composers of the music, the whole team, to create a film that was memorable, and it's sort of what movies used to be something that was worth seeing. And that's what we're trying to make. That absolutely is what we're trying to make. We're talking today on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with John Groders. He is the writer and director of a brand new film, Sabina, Tortured for Christ, The Nazi Years. He is also the director of Tortured for Christ, the movie, which is available from the Voice of the Martyrs on DVD. If you haven't seen that one, uh, you might want to see that before you go to the theater on November 8, 9, or 10. John, you talked about God's hand on the production. You talked about the fact that your church was praying. Uh, People here at VOM were praying for the production. One of the last questions I always try to ask, we want to equip listeners to pray. We're, We're getting ready for this movie to be out all across the country. Thousands of people are going to go into a theater. They're going to sit down and watch this film. What are the ways that you're praying about these days, the the launch days, the theater days, and and how can our listeners join in those prayers? 
Going to the theater is obviously a personal choice. Um, it's a choice that um, is easy to not make, especially recently. A lot of us haven't been to theaters, some of us for years and years, certainly through COVID. So the safety element of this, and I, you know, we don't exactly know what the status of the world will be on February 8, 9, and 10. But um, you know, my prayer is that this is such a beautiful and worthwhile experience that I would want you to share it with your family or with your friends. Um, I think this, it's appropriately rated to PG-13. It's not a little kid's movie. I don't think I, you know, that's everyone's personal choice, but we certainly don't cross any lines that are going to be offensive. Um, but yet, uh, we would just pray that God opens the doors to the theaters. People come in droves by, by church groups and by small groups and by men's Bible studies. Um, it's, a, it's a gritty and real and entertaining enough film that you will not be embarrassed to take your unbelieving mom or dad or brother or sister, you will not be, they will not sit there and go, this is cheesy. You won't have that experience. This is a tool that Christians can use to reach other, other non-believers. But even if it's just your church, um, it's a, a fantastic, I really believe it's a fantastic film in order to encourage you in your faith walk. So, you know, yeah, we want people all over the world in many, many languages to connect with their story because it's a unique story. There's not a lot of people who had both the, the, the human giftings and then the protection of God to survive what they survived and then to write about it and build on it. They were unique in all the 20th century in many, many ways and therefore uh, worthy of our attention. It's not, like you said, there's not a lot of people who might be, have a life <laughs> necessarily worthy of <laughs> making a movie. Man, I think Richard and Sabina are the opposite of that. So my prayer is that yeah, the, the church rises up and enjoys this film and is blessed by it and brings others. Again, you can learn more. You can watch a trailer. You, you'll see even in the trailer the quality of the production. Sabinamovie.com is the website. Sabinamovie.com. It will be in theaters November 8, 9, and 10. This is intentionally the days exactly after the International Day of Prayer for Persecuted Christians. You will pray for Christians around the world on that Sunday, November the 7th, and then take your church. Go to the see the film. Get an idea of the kind of people you're praying for on November 8, 9, and 10 when you go and see Sabina, the movie. John, it's always fun to hang out. It's always fun when we get to have you on Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Thank you for your passion for this project. And um, I'm so excited for people to see the fruit of your labor. And as you say, not just you, literally hundreds of people have been involved in the production of this film. Uh, but I'm so excited for people to see it in the coming days. Well, thank you, Todd. And uh, we appreciate with, with, with great depth, the work you do, um, the reach of this radio program, which keeps growing and growing. If you're listening to this radio program, know that maybe four or five years ago you wouldn't have been because God's been blessing this and it's been putting it on more and more stations and getting it on the air. And you bring on guests who give witness and testimony because of their own personal lives of things way, way harder than, than I've ever done. So to be on here uh, to talk about this, this movie is a great joy and a great privilege. And, uh, you know, the cast gives you kind of a reminder of, of, of what, in some ways, movies used to be. A, a great depth, great cast, and my hat is off to all of them. Well, we are very thankful, and as John mentioned, we are working now on a, a small group video curriculum based on the Sabina film. That will be available next spring. Uh, we've made a trip to Romania. We filmed parts of it there. We are in the process, and this is really an exciting thing of interviewing women who have been through persecution, sharing their firsthand stories. So the curriculum is going to be built around the example of Sabina, as well as the example of these modern day Sabinas who have gone through persecution themselves. So you can watch for that next spring. But in the meantime, go to sabinamovie.com. Make sure and buy your tickets for November 8, 9, and 10. The movie will be in theaters nationwide. If, if there is not a theater in your city that is playing it, call your local theater and say, hey, why aren't you playing Sabina? Uh, we want to come. We want to bring our church and see this film. Sabinamovie.com. We'll give you links when you come and visit us at vomradio.net. And be back with us next week. We're going to talk about the International Day of Prayer for Persecuted Christians. We're going to talk about how your church can be involved, the resources that are available. 
the first request of our persecuted brothers and sisters is that we pray for them. Uh, the International Day of Prayer for Persecuted Christians is such an important part of answering their request. We're going to talk about that next week right here on the Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network.